morning and welcome to the news here on TV2. It's news you can count on for this Monday, March the 12th. The Federal Communication Commissioner was in the Virgin Islands visiting VIA. Who's in charge at the Waste Management Authority? We'll find out. WAPA says they're up 100%, but still have problems with generators. And what can a 12-year-old teach a bunch of adults? We'll have all the news for you coming up right now. Good evening. Welcome to the news here on TV2. This is news you can count on. We've got a lot of stories for you today. We'll bring them all to you in just a moment. First this. More news you can count upon. We told you on Friday that the Federal Communication Commission chairman was on St. Croix talking about money, a billion dollars to repair the infrastructure on our islands shared with Puerto Rico. And on Saturday, the FCC chairman came to St. Thomas and he met with staff from VIA. He was talking with the management about what needs to be done to restore the telecommunications infrastructure. He went on a tour of some of the modern facilities and what needs to be repaired and replaced. And then he went out on the road with the guys in the trucks to go look at the wires and cables and see the work that's being done in the field. This is the guy who's in charge of the Federal Communication Commission for the entire country. And he spent several days now in the Virgin Islands looking at our problems and understanding how to rebuild our facilities so they're stronger when we have another storm in the future. What's happening at the Waste Management Authority? Let's find out who's in charge. The Virgin Islands Waste Management Authority will have another shift in leadership by the end of this week. Harith Wickrema, the chairman of the board of directors at the authority, will be removed from his duties effective on March 16, 2018 at 5 p.m. In a letter from the government house, Governor Kenneth E. Mapp wrote that Mr. Wickerman's position as president of Island Green Living Association has conflicted with his role and responsibilities as a member and chairman of the board of directors. Previously, Island Green Living initiated an online petition to reverse Governor Mapps, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' decision on using open-air curtain incineration on vegetation and falling woods from the hurricane. The organization cited that the open-air burning would negatively impact the territory's air quality. Mr. Wickrema declined to make statements at this time, but informed that he still will be working closely with the governor on source separation and redemption centers as part of a strong solid waste management policy. The governor's termination letter corroborated Wickerman's statements. The Waste Management Authority saw the resignation of Alice Crawl, the Communication Director, DeAndre Atwell, the Chief Financial Officer, and the Authority's Executive Director, Roger Merritt III, earlier this month. Well, this does put us in a problematic situation. The Waste Management Authority has a variety of people in top management positions, but all of them are gone. Uh, normally, you think about it like a revolving door. Somebody goes out, somebody comes in. But this is four top managers all headed to the exit, all pretty much within the last month. The chief executive officer's gone, the chief information officer's gone, the chief financial officer is gone, and now the chairman, also gone. And that leaves us wondering, with all of our debris, the metal that's sitting in the piles around our islands, and all the green waste, who's in charge of figuring out where it goes and how it gets managed? Top management's gone at the Waste Management Authority, and it's not clear where all of that talent is going to come from going forward. Now we've got some information from the Water and Power Authority about their 100% uptime. The Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority has connected 100% of its eligible customers to the grid. As of March 8, WAPA has 55,584 customers connected to the system, 25,546 on St. Croix, 3,611 on St. John, 26,290 on St. Thomas, and 137 on Hassel Island and Water Island. On December 25th, WAPA reached the 90% mark, and it has taken until last week Thursday to complete the last 10%. You have to basically comb the, the 
three islands or the five islands, you know, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, Hassel, and Water Island, geographical area by geographical area, and make an assessment of every home, every meter to ensure that those who are eligible for restoration are actually reconnected to the grid. So that, you know, it was a painstaking process. It was time consuming. We did complete this assessment of every single meter in the territory. And based on that, we're able to make the determination of who's eligible for restoration and who is not. And as I indicated before, while we have reached 100% of eligible customers, the number of eligible customers continues to grow each day because of these repairs that are being done by homeowners and business owners. But with the good news of restoration, the authority is still plagued by sporadic power outages. Last week, two temporary generators leased from Texas-based APR Energy tripped, causing an island-wide power outage. In one case, on Sunday, there was a fuel combustion issue in one of the units that caused it to trip. As a result of the trip of Unit 25, it also tripped the other APR energy unit that was online at the time, which caused the district-wide service interruption. To restore service on Sunday, WAPA got one of the APR units and Unit 15 back online. The plan to replace the APR units with Watsilla units by the end of the year is still on schedule. So the plan is as we bring these first wave of uh, three Watsilla units online by the end of 2018, we will start to phase out some of uh, these leased units as well as we've already started decommissioning uh, one of our older General Electric Turbines, Unit 18. For News 2, this is James Gardner. This is great news. Not just good news, this is great news. When 100% of the eligible customers are up and have electricity, the era of being in the dark comes to an end. Now, there's still a couple of people out there, their weather head isn't right or they aren't ready to get power, but the eligible customers were all up. And that means even if you're looking through a blue tarp at the sky, or you have mold somewhere in the house, at least now you have electricity. That's great news. On the flip side, though, the bad news about these APR energy generators, units 25 and 15, they've tripped offline twice in a week. Not clear why they're tripping off and whether or not this is going to be a pattern now of these temporary generators losing power and putting us all back into the darkness again. We know that the Wartzilla generators are supposed to be online by the end of the year, but it's March, and there's a lot of time before we get to the end of the year. We've got weather and sports for you coming up right now. Well, hopefully you enjoyed your Monday here today. The weather is really not that bad here in the Virgin Islands, although the ocean is a bit angry. It is certainly uh, very powerful right now. We're seeing very high uh, waves and also some very rough surf. Northern facing beaches, be careful. Rip currents are going to be an issue. But as far as weather, things are looking great. Look at what's going on. Nothing. Maybe a couple of clouds around. Uh, light to moderate trade wind is pretty nice. And it's exceptionally dry right now, which means we're not even going to see a lot of trade wind showers. And if we do, they're going to be extremely light and extremely brief. So for tonight, 74 degrees, mainly clear. It is on the humid side. St. John tomorrow, 82, mostly sunny and humid. And again, we're not expecting a lot of rain here. St. Thomas, 82 degrees and in St. Croix, 86. So perfect weather to head to the beach. Again, just be careful because it's going to be dangerous for swimming. Small craft use caution on the Atlantic side, waves three to five feet winds out of the southeast 10 to 15 knots and on the Caribbean side use caution again it's a bit rough waves three to five feet winds out of the southeast from 10 to 15 knots now the next couple of days we're not going to see much of anything really it's going to be beautiful for the next several days through Saturday again very brief light trade wind showers but mostly just dry conditions and our temperatures are hovering around 82 degrees for our high and our lows in the low to mid 70s. Have a great night.
Through a Howard University initiative in collaboration with a local sorority, the Midray Cummins Park in Frederickstead is both cleaner and more attractive. The motto of Howard University is truth in service. And during alternative spring break activities, over 700 students are dispersed all over the world to engage in the process of uh, extending a hand and a heart to those communities in need. This year, the, uh, the emphasis was on hurricane ravaged areas. The students participating in the Alternative Spring Break program have a special connection to St. Croix. Well, this collaboration came about when um, with Miss O'Neill, her son was a former bison and she knew that we were coming to this island for hurricane restoration and relief efforts and connected with me with the president of Alpha Kappa Alpha here on this um, island, Miss Oren Bowery, and she told us about the playground project, how we would be participating in beautification projects, and once she told me that, I'd be, I knew that we'd be on board to help with this. Asa O'Neill was a St. Croix native that attended the Good Hope Country Day School and matriculated to Howard University before his untimely death in 2017. The program participants was elated to honor Asa. One of his loving legacies, Asa was known to be a servant leader and he was known to be helpful toward everybody and so we wanted to keep his legacy alive by returning to the island and continuing service here. Orin Brawi, the president of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, Muga Gamma Omega chapter express enthusiasm to collaborate with students from the Howard University to provide healthy environments and improve the quality of life in underserved communities. And we were founded at Howard University, so we have a connection at Howard University. We are performing a playground project, which is a national initiative of Alpha Kappa Alpha. This year we aim to refurbish, refresh, renew 1,908 playgrounds grounds which signifies the, the year that we were founded at Howard so we were very very glad to have the alternative spring break team here to assist us with this playground mobiliz mobilization project children that play at the Midray Cummins Park have an improved environment from both collaboration and love for one beloved St. Croix native for news 2 I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown well, we told you on Friday about the cleanup at the Montessori School Playground. Here we are at the Midray Cummings Park on St. Croix with a bunch of helping hands. And what good hands they are. Young people from Howard University, from the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, the Mu Gamma Omega chapter, coming to do some work on St. Croix in honor of a St. Croix native who went to Howard University. What more could you ask? We need to get more young people like this to see our islands and lend a helping hand, and we have to think about how to thank them enough. We've got news out of the Antilly School about their gala. Watch this. It's, uh, it's our signature fundraiser. It's al fresco in the courtyard. Uh, we're thrilled to have restaurants from all over the island uh, helping us out and just having a great time for 400 people. Um, we're really excited to be able to use this space and just transform the campus. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Usually we have it over in the uh, Mark Moran Center and we had an opportunity to have it here tonight and, and it's, it's working out great. Uh, we want to make it a couple of things. One is obviously to raise money for the school and, and we desperately need that to help us recover from the hurricanes. We want to celebrate the best of St. Thomas. So we're doing that with all our restaurants with Bellows West Indies, um, just bringing everything together and, and, and kind of one, one place to visit all of St. Thomas all at once in one night. Uh, great thing to be able to have happen. So we're, we're really grateful. Well, it's a major fundraiser for the Antilles School. It's also a major friend raiser for the school. And in past years, it's been held in some of the hotel ballrooms. But now they've discovered that their own courtyard is one of the best places to hold a special event. So if you want to be a friend of the school or you want to help them raise funds, you want to be at the Alfresco event in the courtyard coming up this weekend. And even if you don't care about the school, go for the great food. Here comes more about a 12-year-old who's got something to say. such a pleasure to be here this afternoon. We have had King Na here, Naeem Hudson, who is a young 12-year-old motivational speaker. And as you can see, the young people are just going wild over his presentation. He really gave them a lot to think about, about positive thinking, about how you set your dreams and how you go after them, and how you really infuse an abundance of knowing that you can do anything that you set your 
mind to it. Girls on the Go Inc. We're a big sister mentorship program and this is our 14th year and it is such an honor to say the least to join with the White Teens USVI to host this event Youth Get Fit 2018. I have been humbled by the partnership. I've been humbled by the sponsorship, our special guests, everyone that's coming out to support us. It has just been such a phenomenal, phenomenal event. We enjoy the awakening, we enjoy the mindset, we enjoy the strength and the courage of this young man. I know he definitely planted a seed for the youth and the adults of the Virgin Islands. So that it was such an honor. I just got done speaking at Virgin Islands. You know, I'm really enjoying it out here so far. But I just want to give a quick powerful message and I'll link you guys to all of my social media platforms. I want to let anyone who's watching, anyone who may have a dream, anyone who may have something that they want to accomplish or do, I want you to keep pushing, keep working hard and one day you will make it to success. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and it's all King Na, K-I-N-G-N-A-H-H. Well, he's 12, and he's got something to say for all the kids and all the adults. You can do it. Whatever your dream is, chase your dream. But what a wonderful event that was, getting people together for a whole set of spiritual uplifting activities, some physical activities, some music, and a chance to listen to a 12-year-old tell you that if you've got a dream, you can pursue the dream. We are all kings in his world, and that's a positive message for all of us, especially after the things we've been through in the last six months. What's coming up in Martial Arts Week? We'll have it for you in just a second. On Saturdays, we do kind of an informal session and informal classes. Today, we're working on some self-defense and some drills. We have um, several master instructors down from the States for us this week, and they're here working on some um, escape drills and some self-defense drills. Um, the children earlier were working on a uh, self-defense avoidance drill where that's what they were doing with the um, the, the washcloths and their belts. You know, avoiding someone trying to grab you, someone trying to, 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 to hold you, control you, how to get away from that. So it's not always about fighting, sometimes it's just getting away. Self-defense, you know, keeping people from taking control of you. Uh, we're Clayton and Princess, um, right behind Gas City. Uh, we do have classes for children and adults during the week. Uh, children are Mondays and Thursdays. Um, excuse me, Mondays and Tuesdays, and uh, adults class, night classes, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. We'd like to say thank you to um, Professor Chris Bashaw and Kiyoshi Rick Walmont for coming and joining us again this year. Uh, they've been joining us for um, probably about the last 10 years or so. Uh, come down for about a week, give some master level instructions, and also give some instruction for the kids and do workshops and so forth. Um, special thanks also to Hanchi Alda Andus, our chief instructor and head of the school. and. Um, uh, Renshi, uh, Roger Summerhays, who's also one of the instructors here at the school. Wonderful instruction. Everybody should know enough about self-defense to be able to take care of themselves when a bad guy comes at them. I can remember from my childhood learning how to take the bad guy and pass him by you so he didn't hit. Good information for everybody. What's happening with the Department of Education? They've got a concert coming up. This month, amongst other things, is Music in Our Schools Month. And this week, we kick it off at WICO, Tuesday, March 13th, 5.30, with the Bertha C. Shelter Middle School entire music department, followed by University of the Virgin Islands Jazz Ensemble. Please come out, support the youth. It's Music in Our Schools Month. Just like Matt Counts or Spelling Bees, we introduce solo classical and jazz competitions from the 6th grade to the 12th grade. They will sign up this month, but they will do the competition in May. So please, parents, Ask the band directors, their choir directors, their steel band directors for more information. The application will be available the end of this month. Solo classical jazz and com classical competition. In addition to all that's going on for Music in Our Schools Month, we have Mies of the Month, six outstanding music educators. From the St. Thomas St. John District, you have Mrs. Can Constantine Gabriel from the Janie Tewitt School. You have Mr. Niels A. Gooden from the Alida Kankran Junior High School. And you have Mr. Luben Daniel from the Charlotte Amali High School. In the St. Croix District, you have Mrs. Barbara Daniels from Ricardo Richards Elementary School. You have Mr. Eric Willie from Arthur A. Richards 
Edwards Junior High School and you have Mr. Kevry Hendricks from the St. Croix Educational Complex High School. Please support all our music educators because they continue to show the support to our youth, giving them confidence through music. The All District Ensembles is something new. It's an all-star group. So you have elementary level, junior high level, and a high school level where they combine from different schools to make one unanimous, great, excellent ensemble. So please check that out. They have auditions this month. Allow your child to audition. You never know where it will take them. We have math counts, we have poetry out loud, we have chances for kids to show off on the basketball court. Here's the chance for the musicians to show off what they can do. The Department of Education is inviting all parents to get their children involved with some kind of musical education or come out and hear the concert. Music is an open door to a career and your child could go through that door. Well, there's your news for this Monday, March the 12th. The college kids cleaning up at the Midray Cummings Park on St. Croix. Wap telling us that they're at 100% getting everybody who's eligible back online with electricity. The Waste Management Authority about to open a new door on a whole new crew running it at the top. And the Federal Communication Commission telling us they're here to help us with our recovery. There it is, news you can count on. Remember, it's your news. If you see something, shoot a picture with your phone. Send us a video. We'll share it with everyone. Bye-bye.